If we zoom in on the capital again from the air, we see this shape which resembles an owl. Owls are significant because they represent wisdom. In Greece, the goddess of wisdom was called Athena and she was associated with owls. Wise old owls are common in many other stories and in ancient mythologies. In virtually every Disney movie near a forest, there will be a wise owl to lend a hand. You often see them also wearing glasses and surrounded by books. The reason for this association is that owls are nocturnal creatures who can see in the dark. Being able to see things no one else can see is a metaphor for the occultist. The owl combines the ideas of knowledge and enlightenment. The owl symbol also brings us to a character called Lilith. Now the stories surrounding Lilith are so contradictory and confusing that it's virtually impossible to get to the root of it all, but in nearly all cultures she is thought of as a powerful female demon. The most commonly accepted myth about her from the Jewish Kabbalah is that she was the original wife of Adam in the Garden of Eden, predating Eve. The story goes that when they came to have sex, Lilith refused to lie underneath Adam in what she perceived to be a submissive position and instead demanded to be on top. She wanted to be dominant over Adam. According to the Kabbalah, this fight led to Lilith flying away from the garden to a cave on the shores of the Red Sea. Within the cave, she accepted the demons of the world as her lovers and spawned thousands of demon children in a short period of time. She then became known as the mother of demons and the wife of a character called Asmodeus, who was considered to be the king of demons. In this form, she is known as the younger Lilith. According to the Kabbalah, Adam then tried to make peace with her by asking God to send three angels to reason with her and bring her back. If she refused to return to the garden, the angels informed her that they would kill 100 of her demon children every day. Lilith still refused, and in her jealousy of Eve, Adam's new wife, she swore to exact a similar kind of punishment on her children. She would attack and kill the children of Adam and Eve. She also vowed to attack men in their sleep, not to kill them, but to rape them for semen, so she could give birth to more demon children. So therefore she became known as a succubus, a female demon who attacks people sexually at night. The whole idea of demons interacting with humans sexually in ancient times exists in the Bible also when it talks about the Nephilim around the time of Noah. Some traditions depict Lilith as being part serpent, and some even depict her as being embodied in the serpent in the Garden of Eden, as though she was somehow present in that moment. In these traditions, she is represented as the wife of Satan or Samael, and the suggestion there is that the temptation of Adam and Eve was a joint effort between the two. Lilith provided the body and Satan the voice. As the wife of Samael rather than Asmodeus, she is known as the Elder Lilith. This may seem like a minor alleyway to be spending so much time on, but the word Lilith is actually mentioned once in the Bible in Isaiah 34:14. Modern versions translate the name as things like night creatures or night monster, night animals, and in the Old King James Version it's translated as screech owl, hence the association with owls. Other versions say night owl or night bird, so esoterically owls represent this female demon. Lilith is also particularly important because Satanists revere her as the rising queen of our age, the most prominent demon of our times. Anton LaVey proclaimed in 1966 that that would be the year of the beginning of the Age of Satan, but that it could be more accurately described as the Age of Lilith. He thought her influence would grow immensely from that point and start to define our times. And her traits do indeed correspond closely to the social trends of the past two centuries, and in particular the past few decades. Up until the 1800s, Lilith was always seen as a dark, evil demon, but after that century, sympathetic artistic portrayals began to emerge. She is now not thought of as an evil demon, but rather a noble goddess, and her traits are becoming revered and loved. For example, Lilith is something of a role model and figurehead for the feminist movement because of her independence and desire not to be submissive to men. She is also therefore the demon behind the natural conclusion of feminism, which is lesbianism. She may also be the force behind cross-dressing and transsexuality. Things associated with her today also include what the world would call sexual freedom, i.e. fornication. This definitely erupted in our culture in 1966 as contraception and technology changed the relationship between people and Lilith. Just the following year, in 1967, the so-called Summer of Love happened where everyone basically went sex crazy. People feel they can now embrace Lilith and her lusts with no repercussions. 
However, she is also the demon behind murderous abortions and sexual diseases, which are the natural results of licentious living. These things are skyrocketing beyond control in our modern world. Lilith represents things which are beautiful and tempting on the outside, but which lead to destruction, the kind of woman that Proverbs warns against in the Bible. Many of Lilith's traits correspond exactly with Asherah, but traditionally she has always been considered to be a separate being. Therefore, how closely they are connected is hard to discern. I personally would suggest that their traits are so similar that they are in fact the same force. Further evidence to support this theory can be found when we consider that Lilith was identified by occultist Alistair Crowley and others under the name Babylon. Perhaps Lilith was the demon that controlled Semiramis and which then became known as Jezebel or Asherah. As Satan attempts to re-establish Babylon in the modern world, it is for these reasons that Lilith or Asherah is considered by his followers to be the most important rising goddess of our time. If you're not convinced that the image of the capital really represents an owl, however, and to be fair, some aren't, it's also worth mentioning a place called Bohemian Grove.